The Tiger Flu by Larissa Lai Read for you by Grace Lynn Kung and Lisa Chuang This is a Bespeak Audio Editions book. Dedication For my birth sister Wendy and my chosen sisters Rita and Hiromi. Epigraphs Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night, what immortal hand or eye dare frame thy fearful symmetry? William Blake, The Tiger They say that at the point they have reached, they must examine the principle that has guided them. They say that it is not for them to exhaust their strength in symbols. They say, henceforward, what they are is not subject to compromise. They say they must now stop exalting the vulva. They say that they must break the last bond that binds them to a dead culture. They say that any symbol that exalts the fragmented body as transient must disappear. Thus it was, formerly. They, the women, the integrity of the body their first principle, advance marching together into another world. Monique Fatigue, Les Guerrières. When heaven sends forth its engines of destruction, the stars are moved out of their places and the constellations metamorphosed. When earth sends forth its engines of destruction, dragons and snakes appear on the dry land. When man puts forth his faculties of destruction, heaven falls and earth is overthrown. When heaven and man do so in concert, all the disorganized phenomena are re-established on a new basis. Ascribed to the Yellow Emperor, the Yin Fu Ching, translated by Frederick Henry Balfour. Part 1. Cascadia Year 127 TAO, Time After Oil. United Middle Kingdom, Cycle 80, Year 42. Woodsnake Year, Gregorian Year, 2145. One, fourth wave, Coraco, Saltwater Flats, first quarantine ring, Node, summer begins, day 15. Behind the clouds of the new monsoon, the ancient mainframe Chang rolls too fast across the sky. He's a big guy, but he appears much bigger than he should because his orbit is deteriorating. His period is down to two hours now, and he casts a veil shadow over the rooftop of the old Woodward's building, engulfing Uncle Wise's carefully cultivated garden. Cora leans against the fence that holds old Delphine in her pen, stares mournfully into Delphine's golden eyes. Uncle Wise got it, she tells the goat. The tendril information scales, Cora's got plugged into the single band halo that circles her head wave gently. For all Chang is so close, the people of Saltwater Flats don't have access to him anymore. Only the citizens of the glass towers in Saltwater City can tap in. As soon as she can afford it, she'll add rings to her halo, or even a full helmet so she can get wiser quicker. She needs all the help she can get. Ma, says old Delphine. K2's sick too. Ah! Uncle Y says that so is Big Brother Everest, though I've never met him. If he comes back to us, he could save us, but I don't think he's coming back. Ah! And Charlotte's got it. Cora never calls Charlotte mom. It seems too corny. Women aren't a mean, you know, Delphine. If they're hungry enough, if they're depleted enough, women can get it. If Charlotte's got it, that means I'm the only one left in her family who doesn't have the tiger flu. Meh. Don't be like that. Cora knows Delphine cannot actually understand her grief and dread, but still, the tendril scales atop Cora's head droop. She scratches the old goat between the eyes. Delphine's hair is pleasantly coarse and her forehead is warm. Soon it will be you and me against the world. Behind Cora, the jars in which Uncle Y grows potatoes lean against crumbling retainer walls. The jars are huge, each one big enough to hold Cora, her goat, and a couple of tigers too. Forty floors below those walls, in the streets of saltwater flats, women, young and old, healthy and ill, happy and sad, go about their daily business, 